it, it doesn't interfere with my, you know, morals that I have as a, as a as a person. I won't. It won't interfere with if someone's bad to me. I won't let it happen. Um, I might be more forgiving and give people more chances in terms of you know affecting my daily life, but it's 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 also it's very confusing and it's also quite relieving because. I can't hate anybody, so it's, I don't have any resentment for anybody. Hello everybody, I'm Asperger's Growth, and today we are talking about nihilism. Nihilism and why I can't help hate anybody. This is going great, isn't it? I'm going to be talking about why I can't hate anybody and why that ties into my personal beliefs about nihilism, which is feeling like there is no meaning to anything, not not just feeling arctic, feeling like that, actually believing it and having this core value. I know I've gone over this in other videos, but if you're just watching this one as alone, a standalone, I'm just gonna give you a bit of insight. I've been nihilistic for probably a long, but quite a while, maybe three or four years. Uh, aware of it about a year and a half ago, two years ago, and I've been developing my beliefs and my philosophical structure ever since then. And one of the strange things that I've come across from diving into the world of meaning and all that kind of fun stuff is that I cannot hate anybody anymore, no matter how hard I try. Now you might be thinking, hey, this is not a bad thing. Um, and it could not be a bad thing. It depends on what your views on my views are. The reason why I don't I can't hate anybody is not because of emotional reasons. It's is is truly logical. Um, obviously, there is some emotion behind it, but for the most of it, it is completely logical. So one of the things that come from being nihilistic is that because you lose all meaning in things. Um, if you delve into the sort of cosmic nihilism, which is like a sub subgenre, so weird and over the top. And basically means when you incorporate science and reality and physics and biology and chemistry into your belief system about the world. In this video, I'm going to take you through how I arrived at not being able to hate anybody um, from being a person who quite readily just didn't like people and could say that I hated people very, very easily. So it all started when I started looking into, you know, what I am. And there was a point in, in my philosophical journey, uh, bloody I'll use that journey word again. As I said, turned a bit more scientific. So I started looking into brains, neurotransmitters, hormones, um, all that kind of stuff. And a little bit into consciousness, which is to do with physics and perception of time and all those, those kind of things, which is sort of a little bit different, but it, it plays into this a little bit. So I believe that what I am, I, start, I started thinking about it, I've always believed that we are organisms. Um, we are animals, we are animals. It's, 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 it's something that, you know, there's a common common knowledge, I'm not trying to give you any more insight into it, but when you, when you go into this whole nihilistic journey thingy, what happens is you start, start taking it a lot more seriously. Uh, you start questioning what you are. Uh, we, we like to think ourselves as humans as quite different to other animals and it's quite egotistical and... <coughs> but anyway, it's, it's quite hard to, as a philosopher and, you know, trying to distinguish the boundaries between animals and, you know, consciousness. Um, it's a very, very difficult thing to comprehend, the fact that you're just a pumping bag of muscle and covered by a layer of skin and what you are is just a bunch of electrical signals that have you know formed their way in a certain way in order to survive better and that survival is you know extended to you creating a whole persona of yourself and uh, an ego i guess and um, you get going to these horrible spiritual words again just completely ignore the connotations behind that word, but for the most of it, in it you, what an ego is is what people generally think they are, what they 
want to think they are. And that's all good, that's fine. That's the general consensus, so I'm in the, I'm in the minority here. I'm very happy to say that, I'm not happy to say, I'm very um, open to say that I am. And I, I agree with that, I am in the minority. So this, this ego is, is created because um, to, co to, co to cope with the, the feedback patterns that we have, like the neurons in our brain, so like, the only reason they fire is because of certain genetic changes, the certain genetic changes have caused them to act in a certain way, and the ones that act in a, in a way that's favourable to our survival will progress and then become more complex, and there's some point in, in the, the genes where there'll be an increase in you know, no amount of neurons, the amount of feedback in those neurons, and that will increase and increase as evolution goes on until we form these very complex beings that need some sort of grounding because we've we've become so analytical um, that we need to have some grounding into what's happening, which is is a very hard thing to to comprehend when you when you think about it. What I'm speaking out of now and what I'm thinking out of is just bunch of cells working together and that's um that's that's the first thing which is the you know, understanding that we are just organisms going further into just cells working together and that sort of progressed onto something else which was um looking into you know what we are it's a very it's a very difficult thing to talk about and relate to because everybody has their own take on it and their own experiences so i'm going to try to be as general and open as um, open to normal opinions as possible. And my the next step of my journey going from on the the, the whole science thing and the whole reality thing was um, trying to find out some solid solid thing that I could find in this whole you know mess of possible things. There's there's you could you can make concepts for anything. You can you can say that you know there's some soul or something um, to kind of ground yourself and stop you from trying to reach the real target. I know there's obviously if you've got if you spiritual and stuff I'm not trying to impose my beliefs on you but I'm just speaking from my own brain and I'm just I'm just giving you my opinion that's the key word opinion it's my opinion and the one thing that I could I, t I tried thinking of things I tried thinking of Emotion, emotional ways of, of, of validating our existence um, all got destroyed by the cells and the neurotransmitters and hormones and stuff because you know you can take drugs and feel as good better than love for people you know and ecstasy and MDMA is like it causes people to release these chemicals they have this such high serotonin levels that they you know confess their deepest emotions and connect with people on some whole different level. I've never done it myself but I've read into it a lot and that's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the examples that, you know, you can't rely on your emotions to validate your existence and that's, that's one, of the, one of the things. And then I started thinking about logic as well. Um, logic is, in, in my, my belief, is, is something that supersedes emotion. Like emotions are a very primal way of dealing with life and we use our intelligence in order to make our emotions good and fulfill the survival instincts that we have and we have very complex ways of doing this because of our our different makeups and our learned behaviors as a kid and our learned values and core beliefs but even if you can be logical about things you still can't you still can't justify a lot of the concepts that you have in your head when you go into this this whole thought process and the only thing that comes out on top is uh you've probably heard it before i think that what i am and that's one of the the end goals of of a philosopher i can't remember his name i'm really bad with names but i do know there is there's one that said that um, <laughs> and that has been an end goal for a lot of people a lot of nihilists and a lot of philosophers and thought, just the ability to think, is um, prove proving that you're existing. Um, and I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I've. It's, it's it's very close, but I think, truthfully, like 
out of my head, right into your head. I think the only thing that I am, and the only thing that you are, the only thing that everybody is, this, that you know, this thing is just observation, just observing things. I wouldn't classify, like, when I say I and stuff, you know, it's um, talking about what I'm speaking through, but it's like, even that the person who's speaking is not me. I, I don't classify me as me, which is a very strange, weird thing to say. Uh, I hope you don't think I'm being all weird and stuff, but I think that the only thing that's grounding is the fact that I am able to observe something. It's, it's hard to develop on that. Uh, it's hard to ground that in logic. It's just the, the only thing that I know that's concrete is that I can observe things. Like Even my own cognition and stuff could be completely separate from my consciousness. I could just be consciousness, observing what I'm doing, not having any input on it. And that's the whole, the whole meaning behind it. And um, that's, that's the end goal in terms of, you know, understanding things. <laughs> Going on to the reason why I can't hate people is the fact that because I believe that this this consciousness is me, um, it kind of stops people from, in my mind, being responsible for, you know, the the, the, the person inside the consciousness being responsible for the, the person that they're observing. It's um, oh my god, like it's getting so so deep, isn't it? So quickly, <sighs> you have to tell me if you. You're not completely lost in this. Um, I'm very, very sorry if you if you are. I'm, I'm trying my absolute best to explain to you what it's like. Um, but because I have separated consciousness from people, um, and I don't believe as a, as a secondary thing that we have free will. I'm not religious or, or spiritual, so I don't believe that there is some external force. Because in order to have free will, you need to have an external force acting on your biology because or else what, what, what would you consider free will? Like, you're the product of your genetics and product of your environment and that's it in terms of what you are, in terms of what I think you are. You, you could have a different view and that's completely okay. But that is, that is my view. And so, if I was going to take it to the extremes, murderers, people, all, all those kind of things, I, I think that I don't, I don't, you know, I, don't, I feel sorry for them. Um, in terms of living my daily life, I would, on the, on the outside, as, as, a, as a person, as my ego, I would actively try and get them put away and I'd, I'd sort them out, you know, like if someone's getting attacked or something, I'm not going to say, oh, well, they, they can't help it, I would definitely help out. And it's, it's not the case that it's going to intrude on my life, it's just... This 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 background concept that always always plucks up when someone does something bad to me, um, someone does something good, any any sort of thing that people do is um, it's not meaningless, but I, I see through it and I see the consciousness, I don't, not consciousness. I don't want to keep saying that spiritual horrible blah blah blah, blah word that completely gives people the wrong idea of what I'm like. Um, I'm not spiritual, I'm a philosopher. You could say that's similar, but I don't believe in the external force of spirits and stuff, so that kind of puts that away. So don't, don't mention it. I know you're not mentioning it, I keep bringing it up, but I just want to make that distinguish, like, you know, clear. You know, I'm not, I'm not spiritual. But anyway, if, if the, the person who I would interfere with if someone has been attacked, so I would, I would definitely interfere and help out. And, you know, if they were to attack me in response to that, I would, I would attack them as well. And not, it, it doesn't interfere with my, you know, morals that I have as a, as a, as a person. I won't, it won't interfere with, if someone's bad to me, I won't let it happen. Um, I might be more forgiving and give people more chances in terms of, you know, affecting my daily life, but it's 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 also it's very confusing and it's also quite relieving 
because I can't hate anybody, so I don't have any resentment for anybody. I, I can I, I see them as you know just their products of their own genetics and environment, and the real them is just this you know awareness, and that's it's also is is giving me a lot of ways of thinking about things as well. I find it very hard to think about the concept of love. Love is like un uh, unconditional love. It's completely like alien concept that I've never been able to logically justify to myself. It's like why would I love someone if they if they're horrible, like and they don't care about me. It's like why would I love them? Like But the whole concept of con unconditional love comes in when I am in love it may be either love in terms of family and love in terms of friends and love in terms of the people, just people in general and relationships. I am in love with their awareness. Like that's it. That's why. That's what I see them as, and it's it's completely it covers everybody, not anybody. It doesn't. It's not. It's not exclusive to anybody. And it can be more intense, and I can feel more attached to people and. I can I can feel more love and you know connection with somebody who lets me get down to that deeper level, which is one of the factors that you know made me attracted to people and made me want to get into relationships with people. And that that main factor of loving them unconditionally has been very useful to me. It's um, it's helped me stop being so reactive and hurt and playing the victim a lot. It's, it's very therapeutic for me, um, but in, in terms of a standpoint when I'm saying, you know, I love like people that are horrible and just evil people, um, it can be very like a, a bold statement, obviously, because if you, if you don't come across from the perspective that I have as a nihilist, it doesn't, it doesn't translate very well. It translates that I'm a horrible person and I don't have any concepts of morals and stuff, but that's... Um, completely not the case. I've just realised from the, the screen now that I've been rambling on about this subject for a while. It was supposed to be a very small subject. Um, it's obviously had a bit of a, bit of a turn in stories and all that kind of development of speech and huggly buggly bliggler bloobler, if you know what I mean. But anyway, yeah, that's why I cannot hate anybody. I seriously do not hate anybody. Believe me, I cannot. Um, but it doesn't mean that if you horrible person, I'm going to let you get away with it. Because I've got morals and, you know, I want, I want people to be good, feel good. And, you know, it's not good to observe people in pain or people upset. And that's one of the reasons why I want to help people and connect with people and make people feel like they're less alone, you know? Like, if you're an nihilist watching this, like, I feel you. Like... It's really hard to like accept that someone does feel like you, but I really do. Like, if you're watching this, just send me a comment. Like, just give me an email. Like, tell me about it. Like, if you feel like you're alone and you feel like I completely don't get you at all, just it's hard. It's like, you, people have to pass this this barrier of of um, accepting that people can feel like them, and I do as well. It's very hard for me for, for me to accept my you know depression and stuff, but. I reckon it could happen, you, you never know. And um, you have to be open to the fact that, you know, I could, you know, I could be very similar to you and have very similar thought patterns. And, you know, if you want to talk to me and you want to connect with me, then you can. Yeah? Cool. Awesome. So I'm not, I'm not the normal nihilist type. I've got a funky old Thailand teacher, t shirt, t shirt, Freudian slip, and a little hat. Tell me what you think of the hat in the comments. Do you like the hat? Should I wear it more often? I didn't think I used to suit them, but nowadays I kind of like them. I feel like it suits me. suits my face more. What do you think? But anyway, yeah. I love you guys. Let me know down in the comments if you're enjoying this series of videos that I'm doing. If you're an analyst yourself, get in contact. Share your opinions with other people. If you think but I'm talking a load of hobscobble, and you want to tell me how it is, and and, and say you're yeah, you can debate it. Like, I'd, I'd be very very happy to have your opinions. You know, I, I I value everybody's opinion, 
uh, no matter what is um, to some extent unless you're just being stupid. So this has been the end of the, the long, I think four videos that I've done, sat here. Uh, I was going to do some exercise but I'm sort of procrastinating a little bit because I love talking to you guys so much. I don't know if it, you could call it talking to you guys, I'm more or less just either talking to myself or talking to a camera, so, you know, it's a whole different video to go into, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, like, subscribe if you like the video. I'm going to start plugging these in again because I can't help myself. Um, uh, so any any support would be helpful, just, you know, share my videos. If you know someone who's going through something similar to me, or has a similar thought pattern and thinks they're all alone in it, let them know about this video. Uh, share on social media. Just I'm a very small channel right now, so any help with that kind of thing would be immensely helpful and I would be in your debt for until the end of time and space and all that happens and everything folds into an eternal blackness. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to go eat another apple hole. And if that triggers anybody, I don't care. What's going on with this chair?